Hello, and thanks for joining the discussion of the second chapter of Do Nothing and Do Everything by Qi Gong Zhao. This chapter is called Many Thinkers, One Dao. But before we start, can you please do me a favor, hit pause, and then click the subscribe button so you can get more content on Taoism, Buddhism, Zen, Western philosophy, and meditation. Now that you've done that, we'll get on with the show. Now, you would expect that a book about the new Taoism would reject Confucianism, the rival philosophy to Taoism, at least in the era when Taoism began. But that's really not the case with this book. Confucianism also has a Tao, but Confucius had a different notion of the Tao than in traditional Taoism. The main source of literature in Confucianism is Confucius's Analects. Confucianism emphasizes few virtues. Loyalty, filial piety, ritual, righteousness, and shame. It was the official moral and political doctrine of China and can be viewed as moralistic, official, and respectable. On the flip side, we have the more spontaneous, individualistic, and unconventional Taoism. Confucianism may be on the prosaic, practical, and concrete side, while Taoism veers poetic and ethereal and can be as difficult to grasp as water. The philosophical works of Taoism center around three individuals. The first one is Lao Tzu, and he may have been around at the same time as Confucius. Confucius actually respected Lao Tzu a lot. Uh, we have the Tao Te Ching due to Lao Tzu. One story goes that he relayed the information in the Tao Te Ching to a gatekeeper, who just, just someone who really wanted that knowledge. And um, he's the one that actually wrote down the Tao Te Ching. Another, theory is that multiple people over a period of time assembled the Tao Te Ching. So he is very much legendary. I can tell you in Taoism, if you would follow it as a religion, some people actually revere Lao Tzu as a god so or a deity, you know, an, an, a deity. The second person involved in the philosophy of Taoism at the beginning is uh, Chuanzi, also let's see, Chuang Zhu. Um, he was a follower of Lao Tzu, and he presumably wrote at least part of the books which bear his name. Um, that consists of a number of humorous stories, often poking holes in conventional thinking. The third person is Li Zhu, or Li Zhu. Uh, he wrote stories kind of similar in nature to Zhang Zhi, uh, rather than the aphoristic or poetic style that you might find in the Tao Te Ching. So that's a little bit on the background of Confucianism and Taoism. Uh, Qi Gong says we need both Confucianism and Taoism in our lives. Otherwise, we'd be out of balance and incomplete. We're going to turn again to the balance and difference between Confucianism and Taoism in the next chapter. So thank you for joining Sloppy Zen in this distillation of chapter two of Do Nothing and Do Everything by Ji Zhang Zhao. Until next time, have a good one.